producers to show you how in the last uh, couple of minutes you started seeing some upside in the PSU banking stock. So let's discuss that sector at large. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shinivasa, for waiting by so patiently. My first question is, which banks could possibly come under the prompt corrective action by the RBI? We've seen the Reserve Bank already take action against the IDBI. So if you look at the balance sheet, if you look at the earnings, the NPAs that the banks have been coming out with, what would your guess be? Who else should brace themselves for this kind of measure by the RBI? You know, if you uh, look at the PCA guidelines that the RBI came out with and they had identified certain parameters based on which they would uh, take PCA against uh, various banks. Now, while these guidelines are with effect from 1st April incorporating the March 17 results, you know, we had done an analysis based on uh, the December 16 numbers which were available to us. Based on that, uh, you know, we see about 16 public sector banks and, and two private sector banks would fall under uh, some sort of uh, PCA or um, some level of PCA or else. So to, to that extent, uh, you know, we would see uh, most of the banks uh, fall under PCA, either threshold level 1, 2 or 3. Karthik, uh, wanted to get in your opinion as well as to now you have IDBI Bank which came in the news, first bank to come under that. What would be the possible restrictions on IDBI's expansion on their businesses, on their provisions going forward? I think if one again looks at the guidelines, the, the generic kind of restrictions or uh, actions that the respective banks would need to take is one, um, you know, infuse capital. Second would be increase the uh, the provisioning cover. Third uh, would be uh, you know some sort of slowdown on opening of fresh branches. These are broadly the three main uh, generic restrictions or regulations which the RBI would be imposing on banks uh, which fall under PCA. Beyond that, I guess it would be bank specific. Maybe uh, RBI would uh, reach out to specific banks and uh, tell them certain uh, specific instructions in terms of any other restrictions. As we understand now, it's, uh, you know, given IDBI, they may possibly be asked to uh, go slow on dividend payouts. Capital, they have been allotted capital in, in Q4 of FY17. And uh, since the net NPA levels are high, they may need to increase their provisioning cover as well. And can you tell us from the private banking lot, uh, which are the two banks in the private sector that you think could come under the PCA restrictions. And these are two small south-based uh, private sector banks. Again, this is as of uh, results as of December 16. March 17 numbers are not out, so possibly they may even come out of the PCA if one was to look at the March 17 numbers, but we'll have to wait and watch. And, you know, just to understand and for the benefit of our viewers, do you really believe that the prompt corrective action could go a long way in clearing up the stressed assets which are being paid at 9 lakh crore rupees? How much of this is actually coming from the last 30 to 50 big accounts? Uh, so this coupled with insolvency, do you think that's where the solution lies? I'm talking about the insolvency trigger that's uh, been included in the ordinance signed by the president. You know, one needs to look at this uh, PCA in, in relation to a um, lot of these things which you've just said. I would view PCA as a, as a right step because, uh, you know, one is at first level identifying the entities which have slipped on various parameters and the endeavor is there to, to take corrective actions right now so that these banks don't suffer further pain going, uh, going down the road. So to that extent, it is, uh, it's an important measure. And mind you, the, the PCA guidelines which came out last month are in fact more stringent than the earlier set of guidelines which we've had for so long, specifically in terms of you know, the, the capital threshold be below which a bank would fall under PCA has been increased. 
the NPA levels uh, above which a bank would get classified under PCA has come down. So in that context, and also RBI has added an important level of uh, CET level 1, CET 1 for, uh, for a PCA threshold. So all these do point out that you know, the RBI is wanting to take uh, corrective actions or at least sound out the bank management and the investors at large that certain actions needs to be taken earlier uh, rather than later. So in, in that, in context of uh, the Insolvency Act, the government and the RBI's uh, steps to, uh, to sort of de-stress the, the banking system, combined these are definitely steps in the right direction and we hope that they yield results at the earliest. Okay, let you go on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and giving us your views on what exactly the stringent action means, the implications on some of the PSU as well as private banking names.